There's few things that 40k collectors go mad for quite in the same way as massive box sets of discounted miniatures, but in this video let's talk through the best and worst of them, which of the Christmas Battle Force box sets are most desirable, and which ones come up short. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Christmas Battle Forces once more, and in this video I thought we'd go through each of them in turn, ranking them against each other, and talking about which ones are the most and least popular. Games Workshop announced these great big 40k deal boxes earlier in the week. Six Christmas Battle Force sets for Warhammer 40k, one for Orcs, one for Space Marines, and then one each for Guard, World Eaters, Botan, and Tyranids. As before, I think they're quite likely to be around about the £130 or $210 mark, could potentially be a little bit north of that, given that that was last year and inflation has happened since then. Games Workshop often tends to pass that on to the consumer. They'll likely be dropping around about the 3rd of December, maybe the couple of days before that, given that that's when the Saturday order falls. So maybe not all that long to wait if you wanted to get your hands on them. Earlier in the week, I made a bit of an initial reaction video to them. I thought it would be good to follow that up with a proper look at which one of these rank better by various different metrics. Perhaps the most interesting one to my mind is literally by viewer vote. I think genuinely the best way to determine which of these are best is to ask people. The value of a Warhammer box isn't just about points in the box or the amount of money that's saved, though I think both of those are kind of important. I think it's just as much as to the size, quality and feel of the miniatures that come in the set, and that can make them much more or less desirable. I thought we'd go through each of the box sets, starting with the least popular and working towards the most popular. I had a bit of a prediction as to which way they would go, Looks like I managed to call the first four right, but just got the top two transposed, which do appear to be very close together by your guys' vote. As we're on the subject of Christmas Battle Forces, I thought that these things would make a fun target for the December Channel giveaway. At the time of recording, we've still got the Warlord Titan one to go for November, but perhaps slightly getting ahead of myself, I think we'll plan for the Christmas box sets to do the December one. And for this one, there's going to be eight different winners, each of which will get to pick their favourite Battle Force box, and I'll ship and post it to them. In general, as we'll get on to, I feel like most of these are quite nice in their own way. They're all pretty interesting for one reason or another. Fairly good ways to jump into an army or potentially add a few more units to an existing collection, but that does depend on which ones you need. As always, with the channel giveaways, there's two equal ways to enter, which are both linked down in the video description. Either you can support the channel on Patreon for any amount whatsoever. That gets you automatic entry to the giveaways each and every month, including the Warlord Titan 1 for November. Or you can enter via social media by responding to the post that appears on the first of the month. That's active for around 24 hours. I respond to the post on the channel's Facebook page with a picture of any 40k mini or imagery, along with your name and date handwritten within the photo. The last bit is just to deter Facebook bots and spammers and make sure the prizes go to real hobbyists around the world. Then when all the entries are in, the draw is done by a random number generator. Everyone gets just one entry, whether you've entered via Facebook or Patreon. I'll pull out the eight winners, get in touch with them to ask which box set they'd like, and announce the results on the channel update video here on the channel on the 4th of December. The boxes will be posted to people just as soon as I receive them. In any case, check out the Patreon link or the Facebook page link down in the video description if you'd like to enter for either of those. And as mentioned at time of recording, the Warlord Titan giveaway is still to come. That one's going to be happening for the same days, but for November. Back to the subject at hand though, and let's go through the battle forces one by one. First up, and ranked in 6th place by you guys with only 45% approval on the popular vote, is the Space Marine Spearhead Force. Seems that overall, despite an abundance of the new jump infantry, this is just one that people aren't that bothered about for the most part. Though I feel like with really quite a heavy focus on just a few of the new model units, if you did want to pick up the jump infantry in mass, it's really not the worst. In the box is the new captain with jump pack, and then three squads of the new assault intercessors with jump packs, 15 in total, plus three outriders and an invader ATV. I guess if you were looking to add just really quite a dedicated and focused jump intercessor part to your army, then this one feels very focused on that, and it looks like it would kind of amount to basically get all the jump marines and then get the outriders and the ATV more or less for free. Admittedly, the jump intercessors are fairly strong in game right now, fairly handy for dropping down, doing things like actions and secondaries and things, and then going on to skirmish with enemy infantry. Could be nice enough for Blood Angels as a result if you wanted to get some jump packs en masse. I feel like at the moment though, the Invader ATV and the Outriders probably do lessen the value to some people. They just have quite a different feel to the Jump Intercessors, even if they're still fast attack type things. The Invader ATV has just typically been a unit that's tended to divide opinions. Some people do absolutely love the Mario Kart style boggy of the Primaris, though plenty of people aren't really the biggest fans. Maybe it doesn't help too much either that both the Outriders and the ATV are kind of bad in game right now. 
might make it kind of feel hard to be too excited about them. Even beyond just model mixes and popularity though, it's still quite bad by the other metrics as well. Adding how much Games Workshop would sell the miniatures for separately, you look like it's around about £198, €258 or $330. That puts it sixth and last, though not really too far behind the next closest competitor. Only seeming to be around about a 35% discount, at least based on last year's prices. It is very, very squarely the last for points on the board as well. Basically all the units inside this are really quite cheap in-game right now partly just due to the fact that they don't really deal all that much damage, even if they are kind of fast. You only get around about a quarter of a 2,000 point army in the box set at the moment. It's not really particularly exciting from a points on the board point of view. Moving on and voted in 5th place was the Cadian Defence Force. It does look like it was voted 2nd last by you guys, but still it's an absolute far cry from the Space Marine box set. That one was rated at 45% approval, so by far the lowest. This one's all the way up to 65 not too bad when the top boxes only got 78. Basically in terms of desirability and excitement, the Space Marine box does seem to rank by far the lowest. In any case, in the Imperial Guard box, you get a company command squad, two sets of 10 Cadian shock troops, and then two mighty Rogal Dawn battle tanks. Due to that unit mix, the Rogal Dawns just really just dominate the box. They're by far the most points in the box and by far the most money here. And that means that the decision of whether or not to buy this is going to very heavily focus on them. If your guard player doesn't have any dawns at all, then it could be kind of interesting. If you've already got one or even two, then it perhaps becomes a bit more questionable. At least the dawn tanks are pretty good in game at the moment. They're one of the strongest battle tanks, along with a few of the Lehman Ross variants. And for the most part, I'd say for most players, having extra infantry is kind of handy. The kits in here do have perhaps a slightly unfortunate overlap with the kits that are in the combat patrol though. In particular, if you've already got one of those, you might not be as bothered about getting a second command squad. But you can absolutely feel more than one in guard if you've got multiple infantry blobs. For price and points discounts, it also does rank amongst the lowest as well, kind of fitting quite well with the popular vote there. For the price discount, you get around about £207 or 345 US dollars in the box, around about a 38% discount by last year's prices. That would put it fourth overall. And for the amount of points that you get in the box, it's 705 points, fifth best there, but again, this one isn't really too far behind a number of other competitors, where it's vastly, vastly ahead of the Space Marines. Overall, it's basically Rogal Dawn's the box set. If you want to, plus you can actually use the infantry, then it seems like it could be a good pickup. If you don't, then it's probably not going to be worth it. Next up on the popular vote, we have the Beast Nagger Stampede for the Orcs. Fourth most popular, with a classy 69% approval rating. And in this box set, again, you get a fairly focused force all around the newer style Orc Beast Nagger models. Literally all of these are relatively new. The Beast Boss on the Squiggasaw that you could build as Mozrog Scragbad. Three Squighog Boys, plus the Smasher Squig and Bomb Squig. 10 regular Beast Nagger boys, a kill rig that you could also build as a hunter rig and whir boy, and finally a pain boss. Again, perhaps like the Imperial Guard box, I can't help but think that this might have been voted a little bit lower just as it's perhaps a bit more niche in appeal, in that it might not be just an absolute auto buy for every single orc army out there. It kind of depends as to how much you're wanting to build into the Beast Nagger aesthetic, which does feel like a bit of a sub army within the army. In game, I'd say that the majority of these are really quite usable. Certainly the Beast Boss and the Squig Hog Boys are pretty standout good at the moment, and the Beast Snagger Boys are pretty efficient jumping out of a truck with a regular Beast Boss. I do think that the miniatures are quite fun as well. I quite like anything that's riding a Squig in here. The Kill Rig's perhaps one of those that divides opinions a little bit more. Some old players really quite like them, others maybe feel like they look just a little bit toy-like. By the other metrics, in terms of cost of the kits that you get in here, it's actually one of the better ones. £220, €288 Euros, or $365 puts it second overall, a 41% discount by last year's prices. Maybe not too bad here given that the Beast Boss Kill Rig and the Pain Boss have never been discounted before, I don't think. Four points on the board, it's fourth overall at 730 points. Like Guard, Orcs are generally one of the more expensive armies to collect in Warhammer 40k. I'd say perhaps points per dollar, these guys aren't looking too bad though compared with many. Overall seems pretty fun, a fairly nice mix of different new units. Moving on and voted in third place, we've got the Tyranids Onslaught Swarm. This one was 74% by popular vote, so again a good chunk higher than the Orcs once more. And again not really too different from the very top ones, this one is absolutely considered one of the best out there. In the box you get a Hive Tyrant that's either winged or walking, you can build it how you want. The Norn Emissary that you can build as the Norn Assimilator as well. 
plus 20 of the fairly recently released Hormigaunt Sculpts, and 10 of the recent Gene Stealers. You also get two Ripper Swarms as well, as they come as part of the Hormigaunts. And perhaps not too surprised to see this as a fairly popular option. The Lord Emissary was generally really quite well received, really quite a big scary hulking Tyranid to have in the midst of your force, and has some interesting in-game rules as well, being just absolutely dominant over one objective that it can take. I feel like the new Swarm units are also quite good selling points, Hormigaunts are a unit that you might conceivably want quite a lot of, and getting two batches of them here is pretty reasonable, I think. Plus, the new Gene Stealers are rather iconic and have some fun sculpts in themselves. Again, they seem pretty nice. For current Tyranny collectors, at least, I feel like there's at least a reasonable chance that you might have already picked up as many Hive Tyrants as you want. I guess this one does have the option of building anything from the Walking Winged or Swarm Lord one, so I guess it could give you another option that way if you'd already got one. I would say that probably most of these units tend to be kind of merely okay in game rather than stand out good for the Tyranids right now. I say they're all usable but don't generally tend to be stand out outside of maybe specific formations and attachments. Otherwise, for the price and the points, the Tyranids box is one of the lower ones in terms of cost of the kits, £200, $330 or 263 euros basically the same as the Space Marine one as one of the lowest there, but it does get you massively more points on the board than the Space Marine one, around about 840 points there between the Hive Tyrant and the Norn. This one puts it as the second highest pointed one this year, perhaps quite a nice thing towards getting a good chunk of a 40k army. I feel like this one plus one of the Leviathan box halves could give you really quite a respectable collection of Tyranids on the board straight out. It's really quite nice that there's no overlap between the two. Finally for our last two box sets, it was a very tight vote indeed, only 1% of the popular votes separating them, but in second place came the Defenders of the Ancestors, the Leagues of Votan box set, and in this one you get two of their characters, the Einheer Champion and the Grimnir, 10 Einheer Hearthguard, the Votan exosuits sort of Terminator things, one of the feared Sagittor transports, plus the mighty Hecaton Land Fortress. Overall I'm really not too surprised to see this one as ranked as one of the best out of them, Leagues of Votan really don't have all that many units right now, they're quite a small range that just came about in 9th edition, and basically the targets for the miniatures in this one pretty much solidly fall on just about everything that isn't in the Combat Patrol box set. It means that this plus a Combat Patrol box set would be really quite a nice way to start Leagues of Votan these days, I feel like having both the vehicles included in the box is such a massive win. Both of those are really quite strong right now, the Iron Hill Hearthguard are one of the strongest units too and all of the characters are solidly playable. I feel like their HQ section is actually kind of balanced at the moment. Perhaps one bit of weirdness might be that the Sagittor would have to transport the Grimnir here if he wanted to use the Force straight from the box, but that isn't actually a terrible thing, and it is something that some people tend to do in tournaments. I feel like if you are collecting Botan, though, at some point you are going to wind up with some Hearthkin or Chthonian Berserks, I guess particularly if you pick up the Combat Patrol. Overall, kind of hard to go too far wrong with this one, though, a nice mix of the different units within the Index. The Exo Armor Hearthguard are most typically fielded in big squads of 10 with character support, so it's definitely no bad thing to have two units of them. A fairly nice exciting recent vehicles that haven't been discounted in any way before. Otherwise, I think it's broadly good news from the other metrics as well. In terms of the amount of money in the box, it's around about £237 worth of kits, or $385. This one puts it at quite significantly the biggest percentage discount, presuming all the box sets do wind up being priced the same, of course. At a 46% theoretical discount, if it's similar to last year's prices, that would absolutely put it on the upper end of 40k combat patrol discounts. For points on the board, it gets you around about 750, so the third most points on the table out of the boxes. I do kind of feel like this is partly just because Leagues of Botan have just had some monumental points drops, though. I wouldn't be too surprised that whenever their codex comes around, they might well get some units bumped up in points again, and hopefully just make their individual models a bit stronger in game, as opposed to perhaps a little bit unthreatening for the miniatures, but just very, very cheap. Overall, not too surprised to see why this one was voted high. A big discount on miniatures, squarely targeting fairly new kits, and a lot of things that are very effective in game at the moment. Finally, that would leave us with Korn and Angron himself taking the crown. They only just beat out the Leagues of Votan here, basically coming first we have the Exalted of the Red Angel. They got 78% of the popular vote to the Votan 77, in reality I consider that kind of balanced. Both considered the strongest Christmas box sets at the moment. In the box sets you get Angron, Demon Primarch of Korn himself, two units of three eight bound that you can build as either the standard variant or the Exalted, and ten Korn Berserkers. I feel like it's perhaps no great surprise that this box is popular, 
Primarchs are generally some of Games Workshop's most desirable and most bought miniatures, and the Angron miniature is kind of fun. It's not been discounted before, came out kind of recently, and also gets you a whole load of points on the table. I feel like the 8-bound are going to be particularly of interest to other World Eaters players as well. They've been a kit that's been in very short supply recently. Really quite a big draw to getting them in a box that's discounted. I feel like the unit mix is really helpful alongside the Combat Patrol as well. Again, I feel like this one will be absolutely excellent to start a World Eaters army, pick up one of these and a Combat Patrol, and that gets you a hefty core of Berserkers, the Primarch, 6-8 bound, some Jackals, and a Lord on Juggernaut. Overall, a fairly well-balanced Cornate army there. World Eaters are generally doing kind of well in game as well, maybe not quite as much as Leagues of Votan, but certainly punching up, something like a 51% win percentage, and literally all of these units are good. Angron does seem to make his way into most World Eaters lists, potentially throwing himself forward to break things early, and then having the chance for an absolutely enormous swing if you do manage to roll those triple sixes needed to resurrect a crazy 400 plus points of model. For the other metrics, the discount is pretty reasonable as well, £215 or $355 worth of kits in here, around about a 40% discount here, so only just behind the Orcs one. And for points on the board, I made an error when I last added this up, it turns out that there's 900 points, not 800. That means that this box set is the way that you can get the most points of Warhammer 40k on the board from picking up one of these Battle Force box sets, and Gron definitely doing the heavy lifting there, as he's worth around about half the points in the box. Perhaps not too bad, given that World Eaters were one of the armies that got recent points drops as well. Overall, again, not too surprised to see this one ranked high. Reasonable discount, very competitive units, and really quite fun ones that people want to get their hands on and also putting the most points on the board out of any of the box sets by at least a reasonable margin. Overall, putting that all together, this is the popular vote breakdown. World Eaters and then Leagues of Votan first, closely followed by Tyranids, followed by Orcs and Astra Militarum, and Space Marines in a pretty dismal last there. For the cost of the kits contained, the Leagues of Votan quite comfortably win that one. If the box sets do wind up all being priced the same, it looks like that gives you the biggest discount. Orcs and World Eaters are next and then Guard, Tyranids, and Space Marines are all a bit lower, not too far from each other. Finally, for points in the box, it's a World Eaters victory there, Tyran is not too far behind, and then Leagues of Votan, Orcs, and Astra Militarum all quite close together, and again, Space Marines very considerably behind that, at more like 500. In any case, I'll be interested to hear what kits you're thinking about picking up out of these, if any of them. I do feel that maybe even like perhaps compared with last year, the deals just aren't quite a standout here. The two favourites that I had from a similar video last time round were the Adeptus Custodes and then the Imperial Knights. Custodes got you the vast majority of a Warhammer 40,000, 2,000 point army just in one box here, which was kind of standout, and the Imperial Knights pretty much was ideal for starting the faction. One big boy and then four armagers. I'd probably say that this year's box sets maybe aren't quite as standout as these, though I guess in general quite a lot of the miniatures contained do tend to be really quite new ones this time round, so that might be a draw to people who already have established armies of the factions. In any case, let me know what you think, which battle forces are you looking forward to picking up, or are you looking to leave your factions one on the shelf this year? I look forward to hearing your thoughts and ideas down in the comments. As mentioned at the start of the video, feel free to check out the links in the video description if you'd like to enter to win one of these. Supporting the channel on Patreon gets you automatic entry, or supporting the channel on social media gets you completely free entry. To do that, simply subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the Facebook page, and then enter the draw on Facebook as we mentioned earlier. Should be fun to be posting out a bunch of kits to hopefully help people start some armies. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention the channel's Patreon page and the other benefits that you get from it, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.